Hey, Strictly Patrick here. I'm just uh, wanted to give a little bit of preface on this VOD that you're about to watch. Some crazy stuff happens later on, and uh, we actually have DVDR comes into chat at one point. Great guy, had a lot of fun, um, really appreciate it. But unfortunately, we also had somebody come in and release a bit of private information about him. Uh, so you will see chat is blocked out at one point, and I try to give a little bit of extra context on screen if you want to read it. Um, other than that, uh, it's pretty funny. I, I'm sure there's a lot of laughs, especially if you see what's going on in chat. I'm going to try and figure out a better way to get that more visible for you guys in the future. If you feel inclined, please like, comment, subscribe. Have a great day, and thank you for watching my VOD. Well, any of the other ones will be basically, especially if we did this, right? Yeah, that's 23. How about we do that? Horse and the hair, the friend zoned, and the blacklist. <laughs> Did he walk in drunk? I'm gonna play I'm gonna play the tortoise and the hair one just to gauge speed again. Alright. Today I wanna tell my version. By the way, if anybody who doesn't know, this is uh we've nicknamed this dude Black Pillman. Uh so if you don't know what Black Pill is, is basically like the worst outlook you could ever have on life. Like you're literally going to rope stores and stool stores in the event that you find a rafter um so this guy he's quite a quite a down bad person we've already got an established history of him going to strip clothes with band kids um whether whether those band kids graduated or not we still haven't fucking figured out <laughs> he's he was very close friends with the uh the autistic bouncer and uh yeah I'm going to throw this on 1.5. I think that's where we found out it was like the sweet spot for this dude. So let's play this and then we'll, we'll do the girlfriend in the grocery store. ...of the story, the tortoise versus the hare, because the story is rigged. I remember learning about this when I was growing up. <laughs> and uh, if you're from the U.S., you've probably heard this one too. It's like a... How the fuck is the tortoise and the hare story rigged? Jesus Christ. I'm like, what, fucking 10 seconds in? 14. Childhood story. But... How it basically goes, if you don't know, so there's a tortoise and a hare, which is like just technically a rabbit, I guess. But the hare, he races every single animal in the forest and beats them all. And you know, he's very cocky. And then the tortoise, for just some fucking reason, thinks he can beat him. And, you know, they end up challenging him to a race. And the tortoise, he ends up winning because the hare, he passed out and fell asleep, which it's that's not going to happen in real life. Let, let me let me basically explain the true story. My version, which I wish I, this was the one I learned growing up of the tortoise versus the hare. So this man has never heard of a fucking metaphor in his goddamn life he summed up the tortoise and the hare in 40 seconds okay this is a 10 minute video <laughs> we have a lot to still go on we've only watched 20 seconds roughly well probably 30 seconds because we're, we're we're at one and a half right um jesus fucking christ this man has never heard of a goddamn metaphor ever ever in his fucking life how Let's let's go back. Uh, you know, we're in the forest. The hare, he's been racing. He just he just smoked a, a deer in a race, like easy money, quick. You know, because the hare is smart, right? He knows what he's good at. He's good at running. He knows he can beat everybody in a race. Good for him. You know, he, he understands his strengths. And, uh, you know, he's very cocky because of it, because he's just mogging all these animals to death. And the tortoise, you know, he's at home. He hears the news about that the hare just absolutely dominating. And, you know, he's on the phone with uh, his friend, you know, Jeremy Meeks on FaceTime. And, you know, Jeremy before he compares himself to the tortoise who <laughs> couldn't win the race <laughs> oh he gets close but the hair jumps up and just <laughs> quote fall out of new vegas <laughs> to his turtle game <laughs> the game was rigged Jeremy saying start. basically he's like and he was, he's showing off his rolex he goes anything is possible tortoise if you put your mind how the fuck did the goddamn rabbit get a goddamn rolex to it and you know this inspires the tortoise and he confronts the hare about you know his uh his cockiness when it comes to racing even though the, the most low iq decision in the world to uh you know at like challenge the hare to a race you know a literal tortoise never in a fucking million years guys unless he was wearing like on a roller skates with fucking rockets attached to him would a tortoise ever win in a race what he should have done what the uh, the tortoise should have done if he was smart and had a you know a functioning uh brain in his head he should have challenged the uh the hare to a was it like a swimming battle because i don't know don't those fuckers like swim or something they probably i don't know he probably would have smoked him in that you know a swimming race but nope, he had to uh, prove a point that anything is possible, right? And just completely hum humiliate himself, you know? So, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the hair... <laughs> he literally thinks the hair is Andrew Tate. <laughs> hair and the tortoise, the, the hair, you know, he's laughing his balls off. Like, his balls are just on the floor. That's how hard he's laughing. And 
you know, the whole forest, like they, they catch wind of it. And, um, you know, the, I mean, first off, I don't even know why the fuck a tortoise would be in the forest for, like in the first place. But either way, you know, they, they set the race up because, you know, all the animals are like talking about it. And, you know, the hare is just laughing his ass off because he's like, you know, this guy's going to get smoked beyond repair. So, you know, the day comes where they're going to race and you got the hare and the tortoise, they're at the, the starting line. And, you know, let's say, I don't know, a squirrel, he's like the whatever guy that says go. So he says go. And, uh, you know, immediately, like within like the first, I don't know, not even minute, like 30 seconds, uh, the tortoise, his tank is empty. He's gassed out. He's struggling. <gasps> like he can barely breathe. Uh, the t- yeah, the tank is just completely empty. The hair, he's just on go. You know, his tank just really, it just never gets empty. So he just immediately sprints. And, uh, you know, the tortoise, he's, he's, you know, just trying his balls off, even though it just, it never began. It was over before it started, right? And, you know, the, the tortoise, he's got like his headphones in. <laughs> You know it's coming, Jim. You know it's coming. And he's listening, listening to like I don't know David Goggins, uh, you know, just like gaslighting him and screaming at him. You witch! You witch! Jesus Christ! What in the goddamn fantasy shit is this? Get your fucking ass up! Do shit! And uh, you know the tortoise is just like crying to himself. Never give up! I'm gonna make it! I'm gonna win! I'm gonna win! Even though, guess what the hare does? I mean, he might fall asleep, but guess what? That mother, <laughs> he's not gonna let that shit slide. He's putting on a timer. He kn- <laughs> Because none of this happened in any version I read. Exactly. I have no fucking clue where this guy got this shit. Jesus Christ, man. No, see, he's going to humiliate the shit out of this motherfucker for even dare stepping on his territory of thinking he can beat him in a race. So what does the hare do? He actually, so he goes, he goes straight to the finish line, like, immediately, right? He just runs, he's so fucking fast. He goes around it because he doesn't, he doesn't want to finish yet. He just wants to just show some more dominance. And, you know, because he gets, he gets dopamine hits. Every single time this motherfucker wins, you know, every time he mogs, the dopamine, he's got, got all this positive reinforcement. He's got everything going in his head. He's like, he's just laughing his ass off like a maniac, just like running. So, you know, the hare... Talking about the goddamn rap and get dopamine hits. He just he does another lap and on, on his second lap, you know, he, he's gonna pass the uh, the tortoise again. So what does the hare do? He takes a nice shit on the top of his head, you know, like a swirling one. And you know, the, the tortoise like he's he's trying to be like unfazed by it because he knows like he's got to give it his all. He can't he can't stop and brush it off the top of his head. He's just gotta you know keep going. He's still crying to himself. I'm gonna win it. I'm gonna make it. We're all gonna make it. And uh, you know, the hare he's just still still does another <laughs> lap around. And on the second lap, he finds the tortoise's wife, fucks the tortoise's wife, maybe passes out a little bit. I don't know. I mean, he's got all the time. Jesus Christ, man. Holy shit. Wow. In the world, the tortoise is pretty fucking slow. So, yeah, he finds the tortoise's wife, fucks the tortoise's wife, and then does another lap around, takes another dump on his head. You know, at this point, the, to- the tortoise is still, you know, he-, he's- he has no idea what's going on. And, uh, you know, he's still, he's got, like, the shit on his head, and he's just, like, completely defeated at this point, just, like, trying his ass off. He still, he still thinks in his head, guys, that he's going to win, even though technically the hare won, like, three times already. He just didn't, you know, go through the finish line, just went around it, and... You know, he just keeps doing this over and over again, and the, the tortoise, you know, he's just so slow. He's just trying to, you know, catch up. And finally, you know, after the, the longest, the longest time in the world, right? The hare is just going. He's going everywhere. He's doing everything. Um, you know, he just right, like literally, right as he's at the finish line, you know, he sees like the little, uh, well, like that connector thing that you got to run through to, like, you know, break it, and that's who wins. So, uh, you know, he's he's thinking in his head. He's like, I got this. I can't fucking believe it. Oh my god. You know, still blasting in his head all of the shit, and uh, you know, the hare, because he you know he's the hare ain't losing. You know, he he literally. So, so right, like the tortoise, he's like right there. He's like like a couple, a couple feet away from it. The hare just runs right next to him and then stops like right at the finish line. Like the hare's just standing right there, just like he could literally just walk like what a millimeter and he'll win. That's he's just like right on the finish line. And the tortoise is like, no, please, no, I got this. Never give up. Oh. And the second, like a millisecond before, uh, you know, the tortoise goes through the finish line. The hare just like walks right right past him, and uh, and wins. And then and I guess I don't know. Maybe he'll take another shit after. Okay, after he wins, he takes another shit on his head and and then fucks his girlfriend or wife again. And then and then and then uh what? Five months later, uh, the tortoise's wife finds out she's pregnant and doesn't want to say anything. <sighs> so that's like the story of life. Um... <laughs> wow. Holy fuck, man. You totally missed the story. I-, I don't know where you found this story, what you read, but this shit ain't the tortoise in the hair, by the way. This is some goddamn, like, kink fetish shit that you found on a goddamn furry fan site of some sort involving scalies and everything else like i i don't fucking know the education system has really failed this guy i you know i'm all for blaming the education system most of the time i i don't know if they're the problem here <laughs> you know the i don't know the hair i mean the tortoise he should have he should have knew he should have known like why would you why would you do that dude and i bet you know the whole thing about the original story like, even if the tortoise did by a miracle, like, it would be a literal miracle and complete luck, because you know the next race he would get smoked. But if it was, you know, if he won by sheer luck, right, Mr. Collector would just smack him upside the head, you know? I feel like this happens with, like, a lot of guys who, 
you know, like they'll, they'll date, like they'll start dating and they'll, they'll have like a, what their high school sweetheart, they'll date their high school sweetheart. And then a couple years go by and then, you know, they'll break up and they think in their head like, well, it was so easy the first time. Well, let me, let me go get back in the dating game. And they find out like it's super difficult now. And he read this on DeviantArt, I bet. <laughs> you know, it, it's just like uh, completely different. And, you know, they have like that one lucky experience. It's sort of like the survivorship bias. You know what I mean? Like these people, like they'll have something, a fucking miracle happen and think it could happen to anybody else. But the harsh reality is that you know, my version of the tortoise and the hare probably would have happened to the tortoise, unfortunately. <laughs> Wait a fucking minute. Wait a fucking minute. I'm not even fucking typing. There's a form of selection bias that can lead to an overly optimistic belief because multiple features are overlooked. Logical error can concentrate entities that passed a selection process while overlooking that did not. This can lead to incorrect conclusions because of incomplete data. Wait a minute. Time. Well, let me let me go get back in the dating game, and they find out like it's super difficult now. And you know, it, it's just like uh, completely different. And you know, they have like that one lucky experience. It's sort of like the survivorship bias. You know what I mean? Like these people, like they'll have something, a, a fucking miracle happen, and think it could happen to anybody else. But the harsh reality is that you know, my version of the tortoise and the hare probably would have happened to the tortoise, unfortunately. <laughs> No, no, he actually used it right. I thought that he was maybe going down that that route of survivor's guilt as well, but like I I thought that he was meaning I forget what the fuck it's called. I, I thought it was survivor's bias, like um like surviving an inner insurmountable odds type situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is this. It is this. Uh so here, um so the story behind this, um, okay, we're just gonna do whatever. So there's this image, right, right. <clears throat> so there'd be what is B fifty twos back in World War Two, right? There's a scientific study. Well, not even scientific. There's this this study going on of like, oh, okay, you know, like these uh these B fifty twos that are coming back, they're all shot to hell, and they're looking at like where they're shot, and then you know, what, what key features and systems are in these areas and, uh, saying, okay, we probably need to reinforce these areas. Right. Well, the thing was, is that there's two things to consider here. Um, <clears throat> better increase aircraft survivability. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Um, the th two things that are going on here. So first off, they're only measuring the aircraft that are making it back. Okay. Secondly, the survivor's bias thing feeds into these areas that are being shot up are actually the areas where the plane can be shot up and still make it back, okay? These areas in white mean that, <laughs> uh, you know, those people aren't making it back. So odds are there's probably, like, the fuel tanks in the wings here, and, you know, if they're getting shot in those, like, especially in these areas, it's probably either affecting flaps or fuel. Uh, the engines, um, I don't know where the pilot sits, uh, and then, you know, the other aileron controls that you might have that are necessary to the back of the plane, if this whole section is missing, it doesn't quite matter. So, yeah, that he, he is right in using the term, but, like, it's just, he's literally applying that to the fucking story of the tortoise and the hare. <laughs> And, uh, you know, the, the whole childhood one we were taught, that ain't happening to a lot of people. Sheer luck that the hair had to fall asleep like that. And, uh, yeah. And then, yeah, he's just gonna have all this, like, false confidence and think, oh, I'm the man, I'm the man, and go on, like, you know, other races and then just get defeated and wonder, what happened? What happened? I don't know, man. The moral of my story, I guess, is understand what you're good at. Because there's things, and, and this is the thing, like, uh, I know people are- What is this guy good at? we are gonna say, how, how do you know without trying? I feel like you sometimes know, though. Like, there's gonna be things that you like, you know what I mean, that you mog at completely. That you just, I don't know, you just know. Like, if you really enjoy it and you know, you know you're, like, in the top bracket for whatever it is, just do that. I don't get why there's, like, this whole, like, people want, like, revenge and shit. Like, I'm going to show. Yeah, exactly. You know, the, the, anything in those areas that were in white, yeah, the, the plane was done for. Them, even though I'm really good at soccer, I'm going to show them I'm the best baseball player because I got bullied that one time for it. And it's like, what? I don't know. I just, like, notice people doing that a lot. You, you always want what you can't have. I mean, by the way, side note, I kind of hated this mission that was in Cyberpunk because, like, this leads to some really fucked up shit in the game. And it's like one of those like situations that like you didn't realize going into it, no matter what you do is a bad choice. It's kind of like that fucking, oh, what was the goddamn, was it uh, Modern Warfare or whatever, the airport one? It's almost that bad. 
I basically chose to kill everybody in the room. I mean, I noticed that with myself too, you know what I mean? Like, my one itis can't have, whatever. I don't really, I don't care about that anymore because I think she blocked me. I'm not even joking. <laughs> but, uh. Okay, we, I need to figure out, so. <laughs> yes, no Russian. Yes. And the one itis person is a person. And I don't, I don't know quite the, uh, quite the lore on this yet. I haven't found the story behind that. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's brutal, man. It's a brutal life. You know, the tortoise and the hare. Rest in peace to the tortoise, you know, that, that version of the tortoise. Um, yeah, I don't know, life is funny. That's pretty much it. Jesus fucking Christ, man. All right, today, I want to tell my version of the... Uh, get out of here with shit toy. I go here, let's... All right, today, I want to talk about... Uh... <laughs> so this one is uh, humiliated and defeated, officially blacklisted and rejected from my old job. Uh, probably the most brutal thing that's that's probably happened, uh... I'm officially blacklisted from my old job, meaning they don't want me back. I can't come back. Um, oh, I didn't realize that there was that kind of meaning to it. Hmm. I didn't really think about it that way. I just, I played all this stuff with this storyline and was like, oh, this game's all right. I don't know what. And then it like got really fucked up with like what happens to the dude that was on the motorcycle at the beginning of that video. If you know, you know, like it just, it gets like fucked. Um, it's been a very like defeating past couple months. Um, you yeah. know, especially too with like a this guy, I shot him in the fucking head. I shot that guy in the head, and I shot that guy in the head. Um, and I also like I I tried to play this like really well to like negotiate out of this situation. Like there's no negotiating out of this. By the way, like I'm I'm just fucking spinning it on a fucking story here, on a fucking video game. Probably the most brutal thing that's that's probably happened. Uh, I'm officially blacklisted from my old job, meaning they don't want me back. I can't come back. Um, it's been a very, like, defeating past couple months, um, you know, especially, too, with, like, other jobs and stuff like that. But, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, like, defeated beyond repair at this point. Like, it's just, I don't know. It just feels, like, humiliating. Let me let me get into, like, you know, detail of, like, the whole saga, you know, everything that's happened so far with, you know, trying to get my old job back. Um, so I can't... Oh, Necro, you missed, you missed the whole, uh, the whole tortoise in the hair black pill version. Uh, we're on to, uh... Why he was officially blacklisted and rejected from his old job. Came back, this was, I think, like mid-October. You know, I just came back from down south. That wasn't working out. Probably wouldn't have worked out, whatever. It is what it is. I, you know, drove. I don't remember how many hours exactly. I know it took an entire day. Um, but, I mean, man, you know, I, I feel like I could be a truck driver. But the thing is, you know, I, <laughs> I feel like that would drive, drive me, like, literally insane. You know, like, my brain was melting out of my head. I was just like, oh, man, I just had, like, so much going on in my head. Because, like, you know, not only was I pretty much getting sent back to square one you know that's the most humiliating part about it can you imagine like you know trying something new and then flopping terribly and just getting sent back to the first first stage you were at that's like the story of my life honestly but there's just something about this one that just really just did a number on me because it's like i thought you know that moving to a different state would like solve all my problems i was gonna find a job right away i would just my life would change i would you know meet people or something and none of that happened at all i just ended up rotting away in a fucking trailer home <sighs> so you know let's go so fast forward or i guess you know go back mid-october the drive home, I actually passed my job, and I wanted to stop by just to say hello, particularly to this one woman, this really old woman who was probably one of the only people there that was nice to me. Um, basically, at my job, uh, you know, during the end of the day, like the last like few hours, they would have me pretty much babysit her at the ca uh, you know the register because I we think at least I think I don't know she had uh, dementia or something so something was off, you know. My brain went to like fifty first dates with this fucking conversation with this woman. And she was a nice lady, you know. She was, I think, she was seventy something. I, I think, uh, <laughs> I remember seeing in the, what the fuck is that? Uh, what is it? Like the the book? Like you have to write your name, date. What for? Like I don't know. It's like for employees. Um, she was born in nineteen fifty two, so that would make her what seventy. Wait, I know she had a February birthday, so that make her. I think so. She's gonna be seventy two. Um. And, you know, she had, like, dementia or something. She used to, I basically, you know, when I was working with her, like, the last few hours, just, you know, she would say, like, it's, she would tell me a story about something, like, oh, this customer did this. And then, like, an hour later, just completely for forgot she told me. And she would repeat herself again. And, you know, I'd just be like, haha, you know, because I don't want to be, like, be a dick and say, hey, because she did it all the time. You know, I, I just kind of pretended, like, I had dementia, too. I was like, okay, yeah. This guy got gaslit by a fucking dementia patient. No. But yeah, first time hearing it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. She was a nice lady, you know, and uh, I wanted to talk. Oh, my God. Oh, that makes sense with the man would <laughs> cause her to forget that. <laughs> Twisted tea. <laughs> oh, you should go take a bath, son. You smell like you've been at a whorehouse. Uh, 
my brain even said it was wrong and I still typed talk to her um which I thought would be like 10 minutes because she does this thing where she doesn't you know because my social skills aren't great and hers are just terrible like she, she doesn't no I would have never guessed that this guy's social skills are not that great <laughs> but uh yeah I don't know she was a nice lady you know and uh I wanted to talk to her um which I thought would be like 10 minutes because she does this thing where she doesn't you know because my social skills aren't great and hers are just terrible like she, she doesn't know how to like was it like take a hint when people are like you know trying to you know get away from the conversation and she just kind of again just like rambles on and on and on uh about just like whatever it is and she'll keep you there for like hours and that's what happened you know i was there for two hours and well every fucking conversation she's never met you before she's gonna tell you about everything <laughs> this is fucking sad. you know i actually ended up uh talking to the manager and she was like freaking out she's like oh my god you're back apparently like wait a minute wait a minute wait a fucking minute why is there chapters to this Oh God, this is going to get good. There's good news at the end after rejection. But why is there chapters, man? Like this was one story. Like she was thinking about me like two weeks prior. Like she wanted me to come back because, uh, you know, she was explaining to me. She was like, you know, there's these fucking guys. They're, they're, she, she was like straight up. She's like, these guys are fucking drug addicts. She was like, you know, this one dude passed out in the fucking bathroom with, there's like needles everywhere. And, uh, these guys just come in on, off of shit. I mean, that's not, like, uncommon, because, you know, when I was working, when I first started, when I was, like, doing that warehouse... I have nothing either. Like, I'm just surprised. Like, I, I didn't expect this story to require chapters. Shit in the basement, because it's so fucking funny, guys. It was literally a basement. Like, <laughs> I don't exactly know how you come in on, off of shit. I mean, that's not, like, uncommon, because, you know, when I was working, when I first started, when I was, like, doing that warehouse shit in the basement, because it's so fucking funny, guys. It was literally a basement. Like... <laughs> I don't exactly know how you could call it a warehouse. I mean, that's what everybody called it. Like, it was a fucking warehouse, technically. But, like, it was just a basement. And, you know, with, like, a bunch of shit. And you just, like, you know, ring it on an elevator. And uh, just have people upstairs put it away. I mean, that's just that's just how it was. And, uh, you know, like, these guys, like, when I first started, like, they would drink. Like, I already knew, like, some days, like, you could tell. Like, some dudes would, like, put rum in their coffee. And it's weird, too, because, like, those guys, they didn't last long. Like, there was, like, these apartments that were near it. And <laughs> no, that's how you know it's over, man. When you're, when you're riding a bike to work but it was just funny like all these dudes they would just ride their fucking bikes to work you know like they lived in like these shitty apartments they would just ride their bikes to work and they all kind of either just dropped off or, or whatever it was and um you know eventually they just hired a bunch of like kids like you know 18 19 year old fucking zoomers who uh it was so odd because i always felt like so much older than them even though i wasn't you know by like two years i just felt like so much more mature for some reason and uh yeah she's telling me this she's like you know these dudes are like they're doing drugs she's like i gotta let some of them go i just can't because i can't find anybody and you know, I gotta, like, figure out who to let go. And then she... <laughs> Cause you can't remember who the fuck she's supposed to fire. She's got goddamn dementia. See the first chapter of your story, fucker. Jesus Christ, do you got dementia? Did you forget my, <laughs> my two, three quarters of the way into chapter two? What the fuck you started this story with? Holy fuck, man. Come on. She was trying to tell me, she's like, trust me, during the holidays, I will have a job for you. Like, these guys aren't gonna last long. Cause they don't. Like, most of them didn't. They never did. Like, I've worked with people at that job. Like these defeated ass dudes who just they'll last like two weeks and be like that dementia person is the manager. Yes. Yes, I caught that. <laughs> Which makes me think like what he had to do had it stuck into the memory of a dementia patient. <laughs> However, whatever whatever this story holds for us, remind you we just need to remember that it's traumatizing enough that it's stuck in the whole ridden brain of a dementia patient. You're like, this is too much, this is too much, and then just either stop showing up or... That was the thing that used to piss me off. People used to just stop showing up completely, and I'd have to just, like, do more work. Um, but that would Jeez. happen a lot. It's just, like, a high turnover rate type of job. It's, like, the bottom of the barrel. Like, literal, just, like, subhuman shit. Like, just the bottom of the barrel. You know, I just fit right in there. And, uh, yeah, there was that day, so when I came back... By the way, I'm glad I'm not the only one that just, like, ran everywhere in this fucking game. But I'm, it's not saying much, considering the, the person who's telling this story forgot that they had a dementia <laughs> dementia ridden <laughs> dementia ridden boss so can this be possible it's so terrible that her brain had blocked him out and it wasn't dementia <laughs> yeah <laughs> can you imagine working for a dementia person like uh, like a, like a, an advanced enough dementia person to fit the characteristics that he's talking about like they have you go through the entire employee handbook and you're in like year seven or eight working there i'd go fucking through it i'd have orientation day every fucking day as long as i got paid for it i didn't give a shit yeah sure you want me to go through this oh okay yeah yeah nice thank you thank you for hiring me yesterday seven years ago <laughs> like
<laughs> like literally her brain is <laughs> compartmentalized him away <laughs> just to deal with him. <laughs> oh man. I gotta go back a little bit to here. I've worked with people at that job, like these defeated ass dudes who just they'll last like two weeks and be like, this is too much, this is too much, and then just either stop showing up or that was the thing that used to piss me off. People used to just stop showing up completely and I'd have to just like do more work. Um but that would happen a lot. It's just like a high turnover rate type of job. It's like the bottom of the barrel, like literal, it's like subhuman shit. Like just the bottom of the barrel, you know, I just fit right in there. And uh, yeah, there was that day. So I just fit right in. So when I came back, you know, the old, the old woman was talking to me and then the manager was like, yeah, we're, we're going to need you soon. Just, just keep in touch. You know, we're going to need you soon. These guys are on drugs. Da, da, da. So, you know, I went home all that and, um, you know, still hadn't really heard anything. And then, uh, you know, Halloween rolls around. I remember it was Hall Halloween day and I decided, I was like, you know what, let me, uh, I don't really know why. I was just like, yeah, hey, let me just, let me go there. Uh, cause it's Halloween. Let me just say hi to people again and maybe I'll get something. And, um, I did. And this time it was even weirder because like, you know, the manager, like I ended up just like talking to her. It wasn't for like long at all. I talked to her for like 10 minutes and she, I mean, she was always mean to me like in the beginning. And then she kind of like lightened up a little bit. I guess when you have to work with people, you kind of have to like learn to tolerate them. And then once that like kind of goes away, cause like I'm not working there technically. So she can just like be like, you know, just revert back to square one, you know? So, uh, yeah, she was just like so fucking mean for some weird reason. And, uh, I don't know. She would, always, she would always like brag about her husband to me all the time. Like my husband, my husband makes so much money. I'm so rich. Like I don't even have to work this job. Like and it's just like so. Weird. She, her her thing. She used to say this all the time. Like oh maybe she had dementia too. I mean shit. I don't fucking know. But she would go oh the only reason why I'm working is because I'm bored. I'm bored of being a stay at home mom. So I hired a nanny. You know my husband, my husband, my husband. He's so rich. I met the guy. He was all right. You know like high tier normie, like average height, um just like well groomed. You know suit and tie. I don't know what he did for a living. Like he's, I mean he, I guess he's strapped with the beta bucks according to her making more than six figures a year or whatever she says. She's like, oh, my husband, rich, so rich. Ha, 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 ha. I'm just like, okay, yeah, I get it. He's fucking rich, cool. But, um, <laughs> yeah, she's just so mean. And I remember, like... Okay, I'm gonna... I, I just want to say, okay, like, making six figures a year, roughly, where I think he think he's he's in... Um, oh, I'm trying to think of some, like, mediocre neighborhoods. Oh, uh, let's go with... Uh, this is a really suburbia, um, like town. Uh, yeah, half a million dollars. That's about average. Uh, 460 as of 2024, February 2024. 508. I mean, half a million dollars. Average, average home value. And this is like not like, like world's most amazing like places. Not some like upscale shit. Um. And it's just kind of suburbia, New Jersey, okay? Um, so, yeah. I mean, it, it, not crazy shit, okay? So, like, yeah. They're, they're talking about, like, this kind of stuff is, like, half a million dollars. Makes sense. He is from Jersey. <laughs> I, I, I'm i dead set. I, I'm, I, I have got this guy figured out. Um, geez, look. I'm a nihilist and bash myself all the time, but he does it so casually, it's actually amazing. <laughs> so, like, I'm just going to say, like, six figures a year, not a whole lot. Like, it's kind of just average. So, like, if they were rich by any means, they're making, like, quarter million a year, 300k a year. It's kind of, like, upper middle class there, Okay. Um, are so close to me. I'm actually getting depressed. <laughs> oh, Jim, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I'm just, I'm just like his, his grasp of the world is very much a young kid. And like, I, I don't know. You know, so like 10 minutes went by and she kind of just like threw me out. She's like, okay, you know, I'll just like, I'll just keep in touch. I, I, you know, I was like, okay, all right, fine. And so I left, I went down to, uh, just like walked like right down the street. There's like this pizzeria. Again, like these people were nice to me too. It was just like, it's like this family owned place. Um, I was talking to them. I, I basically, this was like the first like time, cause I used to get pizza from them like every now and then. And like, I would sit down and like talk to them like on my break. Um, you know, this, this Italian couple and uh, you know, I came back like, oh, hey, how's it going? And uh, you know, I told them the full story of just everything that happened down South, all the shit and, and just everything. And they were just like laughing their fucking asses off. They're like, holy fuck, that sounds like hell. And I was like, I was something down there. Like, trust me, it's just like a different way of life down there, you know? I really think he comes from like a decently affluent area. Like, uh, oh, you know, um, Tommy talks about it all the time. Like, uh, where does where is does he talk about Westfield? I think he talks about Westfield or Morris. Morris would be another good like uh, Westfield and uh, 
to yeah like westfield like 1.2 mil it's funny that i i know some of these areas enough to like tell you i could tell you where he's not from i can tell you he's not from like i don't know i heard east orange got gentrified so maybe yeah like this is the kind of stuff that i see him like coming from with like his point of his perspective on life let's just say that <laughs> and um you know i was in there and then the manager walks in because i guess she wanted pizza too and then she kind of looked at me like eyeballed me and then uh you know she wants to go order something and she turned around and looked up and down she's like i'm just gonna pretend like he's not there and i was and i was like what the fuck so i just i was like why and like i started laughing because like what the fuck like that's so weird she just looked at me and then like turns around and goes like i was like mid-sentence like talking to the the pizzeria couple and she just walks in and goes <laughs> and his parents <laughs> uh lives with his parents and he's not homeless his parents must go <laughs> must got some money yeah i i i think i think he's uh trenton seems low cost like yeah yeah trenton's pretty low cost i i could tell you like uh some of the more like rough areas well it used to be rough areas like he's not from camden uh <laughs> average home value uh home price uh yeah average home price in camden <laughs> There's a reason why the average home price is that there. Um, we're just gonna search, uh, see if they broke out of it this year. Um, I know for like almost a decade on end, these Camden was ranked like ranked like the deadliest city in the United States. Um, news, uh, images, with images like it's a little more a little more roughed up like a little tougher area of jersey like you, you might have grass um or you know again i i heard east orange was gentrified because like i met somebody out here that like dude was from there i was like you're from east orange and he's like yeah i was like how is it he's like uh it's com completely different now i was like really He's like, yeah, he's like, they've, like, regentrified a whole bunch of stuff. But, like, this used to be, like, one of the, like, the heaviest, like, uh, hitting places, like, uh, and it's the only VA hospital in, like, northern Jersey, um, is in East Orange. So, like, <laughs> you had to go into a, to a town with combat experience in order to be taken care of. Uh, but, yeah, that, that's kind of typical, you know, for that kind of area, uh, just to give you an idea, and like these are multi-family houses. Most of the time, they're not single-family dwellings. Uh, most of them are true duplexes split down the center. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else, like Elizabeth, like even Elizabeth, which is you know not far from where I grew up slash where I grew up. Uh, uh, yeah, even there, fuck Elizabeth, even like fuck this world. I know my grandparents lived in kind of a suburban area, not quite as uh, uh, suburbia as like Roselle Park. Roselle Park was like the next step up, um, but like right, like town bordering them. And uh, good Lord, back in just before the financial crisis, uh, they sold my grandmother's house and the house, they bought it in like 1954 for, I think they bought it in like 1950 or 1952 for like $50,000. Decent price. Um, they sold it in 20... Uh, no, I think it was like right in 2007. Like just before the market crashed the first time. Uh, they sold it for three quarters of a million dollars. And it was not like something amazing. Like it was a three bedroom technically uh, house with a semi-finished basement and then the biggest thing that they had was they had an in-ground pool um and the pool was built god who knows how long ago i don't know i believe that my grandmother said her father helped build the pool so like it 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 wasn't built recently but yeah uh that was three quarters of a million dollars it's for like typical suburban type dwelling you know goes to the counter i'm just gonna pretend i'm just gonna pretend like he's not there and just started talking to the you know the lady and i was just like why <laughs> like what it was just so weird and i swear to god she said that and i was just like what 
No, I am looking for strip club reviews in Jersey. Didn't see if any include hints of weird drug patrons. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> there's a few in South Amboy that seem promising. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, I, I honestly think, like, if I had to pick an area, this this kid's, like, he could be slightly more north. He could be, like, uh, oh, I don't know if he's near Wayne. He's more outside that. I don't know. I'd have to think. More. What the fuck? Because, like, the way it's set up is, uh, you know, you got the counter, and then, like, uh, behind it, like, or I guess, like, where she was late, so she wanted pizza, too, and then she kind of looked at me, like, eyeball. I, I get I got caught on my like little history check of Jersey. Me and then, uh, you know, she wants to go order something, and she turned around and looked up and down. She's like, "I'm just gonna pretend like he's not there." And I was and I was like, "What the fuck?" So I just I was like, "Why?" And like I started laughing because like, "What the fuck?" Like that's so weird. She just looked at me and then like turns around and goes like I was like mid sentence like talking to the the pizzeria couple, and she just walks in and goes you know goes to the counter. I'm just gonna pretend I'm just gonna pretend like he's not there and just started talking to the you know the lady and I was just like, "Why?" <laughs> like what? It was just so. Weird. And I swear to God, she said that and I was just like, "What the fuck?" Because like the way it's set up is uh. You know, you got the counter, and then like uh, behind it, like or I guess like where she was standing, I was basically like behind the behind her when she was ordering or whatever, or talking, and like the seats are by the window. They're like these bar stool seats, kind of, and uh, it's just like by the window. Like it's a very, it's kind of like a small little shop, but yeah, it's just like uh, you got like the bar seats, and then there's one like directly in front of the counter, so you don't have to like stand. And yeah, she just like walks in front of me. And, I'm gonna pretend like he's not there, and then like you know five minutes go by. I wasn't even done talking either to like these people, and you know she just was like talking to them, and I just ended up just up and leaving because I was like that's fucking weird. So. Yeah, you know, I, I just I just walked home. She just t told me the same thing. Like, trust me, like, oh, we're going to need somebody soon. And it's so weird because after that, guys, like, you know, when November came came around, this was, like, before I started hanging out with Wingman again, she actually texted me. She was like, uh, can you come in on, it was, like, the weekend or something, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I was like, sure. And then, you know, a couple days go by. She doesn't respond. So I'm like, you know, I text. I'm like, hello. She's like, oh, never mind. I was like, okay. Like, <laughs> I was like, all right, whatever. She did this a few times, too. Um, and especially, so one of the, the next times, I only showed up maybe, like, a total of five times at this place, guys, since I've been back. It's been three months. Showed up five times. So the next time I showed up, I actually brought Wingman, um, you know, because I was bored. I was like, fuck it, let's go to my old job, talk to these people, whatever. And uh, that's when, so and the weird thing is too, like when I was with Wingman, uh, she was just like a lot nicer for some reason. She was just like overly nice. Uh, I don't fucking know. It was just like really weird. And then, you know, when I got to the car, so it was funny because like me and Wingman, when we were there, you know, she's like walking us around, showing us all this shit. And there's this one kid there. I guess he must have been, been new. The, the most defeated look, like guys, I swear to God, his chin, like, oh, Jesus Christ. His chin, like, I, I can't even describe it, guys. Like, he, his, his bottom lip, like, folded underneath his recessed chin, and his mouth was open, and he had, you know, uh, earbuds in, and he just looked so defeated. And I was like, I, I told Wingman, I'm like, dude, that's what that's what this job does to you, dude. Like, it's just, I'm like, that, that guy is just fucking defeated beyond repair, dude. And, um, you know, basically this kid, he ended up, like, yeah. dropping, like, because uh, that place, they used, they used to, um, you know, sell beer, and he ended up dropping, like, a bunch of, like, Coronas or some shit, and they all shattered. And I even knew that was going to happen, too. It was so weird, because it was, like, hanging out the fridge. And I was like, dude, that's just going to fucking fall out. And, and the kid tried to fix it, and it fucking shattered everywhere. And, uh, you know, the manager, she just, she got so mad and she was just like shaking her head and, you know, rolling her eyes. And, um, you know, when I got to the car and this is like such shit timing, like, what are the, like, <laughs> I love how you're like trying to investigate this further. Oh man. I wonder if he's, he could be like South Jersey. So like, mm, that could work. Only my luck, man. You know? So, you know, I get to the car, she calls me, she's like really pissed. She's like, I'm going to fire this guy right now. If you can, if you can, you know, start working. And I was like, okay. And she just went on and on. She was like, this guy sucks. He's terrible. I'm going to fire him right now. And I was like, fuck it. You know, I, just, I, basically, I guess I work mog that kid. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. She kept, she kept telling me that too. She was like, oh, these guys suck so bad. You know, every, every you know, guy that we've had, they just like suck so bad. They can't do the job right. And on top of like the drug addict bullshit too. So she ends up firing the poor guy. Uh, he was, and he was, he was only working like, what, three days a week too, like part time. So, you know, I was happy as fuck. Wingman, he was like, he was like, oh, you're finally getting your life together, bro. Like, I'm happy you got your job back, dude. Cause yeah, she fires this poor subhuman and, you know, he's probably even more defeated now. And, uh, you know, my luck. So basically when we, when we got back to wingman's house before we went out, you know, uh, I was walking down the stairs. If you didn't know, I've talked about this like a couple times and I ended up just fucking my ankle up. You know, I, I twisted it or something and I heard a loud ass pop and I was like, ow, fuck, you know, just, it hurts so bad. And wingman, and I wasn't drinking at all or anything and not, not just yet. And you know, this was like before we went to the bar and wingman was like, oh, I like how he walked that back. <laughs> I wasn't drinking at all or anything. Not quite yet. Sorry, bro. My stairs are <laughs> fucked up. I should have warned you. I was like, oh shit. So yeah, you know, I started drinking, the pain went away. It's so weird too, because like, like, you know, the, um... I just started drinking and the pain went away. Man, that sounds like a motto for your whole fucking life. The next day rolls around and I end up telling her, because I was supposed to like work on like a Monday or something. It was like, it was like Monday, it was like so stupid. It was like Monday, eight hours, and Wednesday was like four hours, and then like Saturday was like three hours. Like, I was just, I was supposed to basically take this kid's schedule that she fired for me. And, um, 
you know, she's like, oh, I just fired him, blah, 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 blah. You know, how, how could you fuck your foot up? And I sent her a picture of it. Because, guys, I, it was, the whole thing, I'm not even joking. It looked like a fucking, um, what was it, like, a, like an elephant uh, foot. It literally swelled up so bad, like the skin ripped too. I, just, I don't know if that, I think it's just like a, what is it, like a cosmetic thing. I mean, I don't, it look, kind of looks like a stretch mark. I don't know. Because I remember, maybe that's what like the popping noise was. I don't know, but like the skin is like. I don't know how to make this work in my brain. <laughs> my, it's my head cannon. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm sorry I don't pay attention to any elephant feet lately. Or ever. I don't see how one could look like the other. Like, separated. I mean, it looks, it looks like shit, guys. Like, it, the whole thing blew up and turned purple. Same thing with my fist. But the fit, you know, me, me punching that whole stripper shit. This man just sounds like he, he sprained his ankle. The stripper pole, that was my fault. I'm a fucking idiot for doing that. The fucking, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's what, like, the popping noise was. I don't know, but, like, the skin is, like, separated. I mean, it looks, it looks like shit, guys. Like, it, the whole thing blew up and turned purple. Same thing with my fist. But the fit, you know, me, me punching that whole stripper shit, the stripper pole, that was my fault. I'm a fucking idiot for doing that. I should not have done that. He punched a stripper pole? This man punched a stripper pole. What the fuck is wrong with this man? Like, that was in my control, 100%. Shouldn't have done that with, to, with my hand, but then I had the, now I have the foot to match, which was a complete accident. You know, it was just blown up purple, and I sent her a picture of it, and she was like, oh my god. Wait a minute, did I just catch that right? Like, he, he's still milking the injury from punching a stripper pole, and now he's got a sprained ankle? Does he look like he got assaulted at the strip club? Should not have done that. Like, that was in my control, 100%. Shouldn't have done that with, with my hand, but then I had the, now I have the foot to match, which was a complete accident. You know, it was just blown up purple, and I sent her a picture of it, and she was like, oh my god, that looks terrible. She's like, okay, when, whenever, whenever that heals, you know, keep me updated, keep me posted, that looks really bad. Because it did, guys. Like, I know some of you guys call me a pussy for doing that shit, for like, you know, not showing up to work, but guys, I'm telling you, like, it was, it was fucking bad, you know? But the weird thing is, like, the pain kind of went away, like, it became more manageable, like, a day later. Like, it still hurt like a bitch, but I'm like... Was it when you were drinking again? Is that when the pain went away again? You know, I could probably, you know, pull, because, like, it was only, like, a four-hour shift. I'm like, you know what? I could probably do it, do the Wednesday shift. So I texted her, and I was like, hey, you know, I can do the Wednesday shift. You know, my, my foot feels better. I'll just pull through it. Um... Cause, you know, I really wanted that job back. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to fucking go. Th I'm going to do it. Cause like Monday I couldn't have guys. Like I couldn't even walk. Like I kept like limping and shit. I thought I was gonna have to go to like the fucking ER and have them look at it. But uh, yeah, like it, it just got better. And you know, literally a day later, I'm like, fuck it. I'll just pull through the pain. It's only four hours or whatever. And she was like, oh, I rehired him. I was like, what the fuck? Like why? You know, I just, I just thought it was weird. You know, I well, cause you didn't show up. You dumbass. had to rehire him cause we're, we're low on employees. And I was like, okay. And keep in mind, this is like Thanksgiving. This is like a couple days after Thanksgiving or whatever. And then, you know, when December rolls around, she does this shit again where she goes, hey, can, can you please, please, I need somebody. It was like, she just wanted me to work on a Sunday. She's like, please work. Can you please come in on a Sunday? Please, please, please. And I was like, sure, let's do it. And she's like, oh, I just talked to the boss. Never mind. He doesn't, he doesn't, uh, since you're not in the books anymore, he doesn't want you working one day because he's going to, because, oh, oh, God forbid, you know, more fucking paperwork for him. Write me out a check and all that bullshit. Oh, too much work. Because like there was actually a woman they had to call that like used to work there. And it was like this whole big deal. Like they had to like, write out a check and do this shit and they were like pissed off by it because she's like not in the books or whatever the fuck it's called anymore i don't know but the, the not on payroll not on payroll is what that's called and it doesn't take a whole lot to write out a check so basically the whole time would be more needed the guy didn't want the hassle to do that and whole funny thing too like my boss like i swear to god like this guy he he never he always made me feel like shit not because he did anything just because like how many bosses does this motherfucker have because we have a woman boss the dementia boss and now a guy boss and like i get it management right but like who blacklists him i want to know I, i'm i'm hooked he always had like this soulless look like he never he never like made me feel human <laughs> like he always would just look at me like i'm just like like garbage like he just gave me this look on, like he, he always had this look and he just never would talk to me he just made me feel uncomfortable all the time i never did you ever think the feelings were reciprocated? I wanted to talk to him because of it i mean I, you know he was a funny guy when he was when he was talking to other people and the, the thing is like I mean, I had some, like, okay moments with, you know, my old boss, but, like, that motherfucker was always screaming his ass off, man. Even when he was happy, he was screaming, man. Always screaming, you know, just all the time. And, uh, you know, I even remember, too, like, when I actually, when I first saw him again for, like, the first time in a couple months, he kind of just, like, you know, the manager was like, oh, look who's back. And he just looked at me and just gave, like, a, a head nod with, like, the most, like, defeated, soulless stare and just walked out. <laughs> and uh, it's funny because there's this one girl who used to work there, like, this was, like, fucking, what, a year ago now? Almost two years ago when I first started that would just treat everyone like garbage. And this guy, um, you know, my boss, he's just, like, so creepy and weird, man. Like whole basically i don't know if you guys have ever like uh you know been in school and you had like that that one teacher that old teacher who's like married he's just like fucking creepy like he'll talk to the girls like really fucking weird and like the girls think it's like some big ass joke even though he ain't joking like the dude's just a straight up fucking creep like and the thing is you know when she came back you know she was like oh my god how you doing yeah la. And it just was like i don't know he just like flirts with them and like, and they like they just can't help but laugh you know like these girls he would do this all the time and i even remember he always used to say like he's like oh we only hire we only hire pretty cashier young cashier because the customers keep coming back the customers come back if it's a pretty girl behind cashier whatever he just like he always like 
who do that. I mean, it's smart, right? Just hiring young girls to be the cashier, whatever. Okay. Is this man like subtly racist or is it just me? Like he's racist without ever actually saying the slurs. But he was just so, it's like, it's like this motherfucker forgot he was almost 70 and balding. <laughs> like just the way he would talk to them. It's just like, holy shit, dude. He's an old You're just like, I don't know. You just, just, just had to see it for is. yourself, man. It's just so weird. And all of a sudden, like, like one of my like, you know, defeated subhuman coworkers in the basement would like. Wait. Oh no. Did you find it, Jim? You actually found it? Like his direct boss and then the guys and one above her. Yeah, true. Talk to him and he'd be like. All I mean, there's a lot of Koreans in New Jersey. I don't know if there was a Korean. Could be. All serious and like angry. And all of a sudden we're like. I wonder if he's like near Jersey City or something. Or like, oh God, I'm trying to think of like, what's all this stuff up there in Northern Jersey? Is I don't know if like Phoenix up there. Uh, it's more like a new. I feel like, you know. Damn boys wouldn't be bad. Maybe a little too south. I think he's more up. Montclair. Uh, Rutherford. Um, Paramus. Wayne. Yeah, I, I think he's kind of like in this area. Personally. Palisades. Oh, that's... Mm, Palisades. Palisades. Fort Lee. Okay, so kind of the same area I'm thinking of. Oh, that really would make sense. Yeah, because there's T-Neck. I thought T-Neck was up there. Uh, Garfield. I don't think he's Garfield Pissot or Passaic, uh, Clifton. I think he's more here. Bergen. I don't think he's Alpine. I think he's somewhere between, like, Ridgewood. This way. T-Neck. Hackensack. Uh, Palisades would make sense. Like, I, I think he's in and around this area. <clears throat> So he's close enough he could work there yeah yeah i i i think he i think he could i think he's like yeah bergen palisades park Hackensack, paramus maybe at the farthest um yeah i i could see that honestly like the female cashiers would talk to him how you doing oh my god oh oh you're very pretty oh so it's just fucking hilarious man but um you know basically what ended up happening just recently so uh i ended up so this was like maybe i don't know two two weeks ago maybe three weeks ago i ended up like showing up there i didn't even like really talk to many people like I, I talked to like a couple like the dudes that i used to work with there's not many left by the way it's still all like a bunch of like young kids like a bunch of young like defeated kids who just like you know zoomers who just you know like, got the airpods in. it's like the same type of shit like they just hire the same fucking people man like over and over again because it's like all they can find i'm sorry he turned into dracula there for a moment <laughs> yeah i'm i'm still trying to figure out this accent i kind of want to go back and like slow it down or like go to normal and then all of a sudden like like one of my like you know defeated subhuman co-workers in the basement would like talk to him and he'd be like all serious and like angry okay okay i think we're i think we're in a spot where we can slow it down and all of a sudden one of like the female cashiers would talk to him how are you doing oh my god oh oh you're very pretty oh so it's just fucking hilarious man but uh... i still don't know if he's doing like an asian accent or like an indian accent <laughs> 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 it's green dracula <laughs> oh man <laughs> i mean it could be russian i it could be eastern european in general i i, I don't know what accent this man is doing <laughs> korean dracula does seem to fit <laughs> um you know basically what ended up happening just recently so uh I ended up, so this was like maybe, I don't know, two, two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, I ended up like showing up there. I didn't even like really talk to many people. Like I, I talked to like a couple of like the dudes that I used to work with. There's not many left, by the way. It's still all like a bunch of like young kids, like a bunch of young, like defeated kids who just like, you know, zoomers who just, you know, like got the AirPods in. It's like the same type of shit. Like they just hire the He's flipping a brick into an empire. This shit ain't nothing. Damn. Same fucking people, man. Like over and over again. Cause it's like all they can find. It's weird too. Cause like they always. This man would be the worst fucking drug dealer ever. Like you could just be like, no, nah, I'll pay you back tomorrow. I'd be like, oh, okay. And just never fucking see the guy again. He's like, man, man, I got fucking, I, I got wrecked by that guy. Like, <laughs> subhuman. Always bitch about, no, <laughs> can't find anybody, can't find anybody yet. It's just, I don't know, man. It's just weird. But, um, you know, I talked to like a few of them and shit. And I talked to the old woman. I must've been there for like a half an hour. I was like actually shopping. I wasn't like, you know, just going there to like distract people. And like a boss, like he's just, this motherfucker's like glued to his camera all the time. Even when I was working, he always, he's just, it's like, he's always like staring at each camera at every fucking second. Like he will know, I guess if, if it's his business, right. I don't know, but he's always just like, you know, lurking on it, just staring at it. And, um, 
apparently like he called the manager and she like talked to me she's like hey you know blah 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 saw you on the cameras talking to the guys you know distracted them if you you know if you come here can you please just like just you know just only come here to shop don't distract anybody please i was like okay i was like yeah sure that's fair enough i'm sorry i did that and uh i ended up because like yeah i took that into consideration i'm like all right i guess i won't like i didn't even feel like it was that long you know what i mean like some of the like they were the ones who talked to me like i didn't even i just wanted to like see the old lady again and see how she was doing you know because it's been a while um, yeah, this man does not have enough motivation to be a drug dealer. <laughs> um, so I ended up showing showing up like maybe like what last week, not even, you know, like not not much after that happened. I ended up showing up, but like to literally fucking buy something, guys. Like this is like the fifth time I've ever showed up since I came back, and uh, everything went fine. I was there for like maybe ten minutes, right? And then you know a couple days go by, and the manager fucking calls me, and I swear to God, this was the most like defeating thing that I've ever. So first, you know, she calls me. I'm thinking like she wants a, uh, you know, she she fires somebody, whatever the fuck she needs. She needs somebody to work, right? I'm thinking like, oh cool, you know, maybe maybe she'll hire me, whatever. So I pick up the phone. She goes, hey. I was like, oh, you know, like, oh, it was just like the way she said it. She was like, hey, she's like, you know, do me a favor. Like, can you please just like try not to like, you know, lurk around the store anymore? I already warned you once uh, about you distracting the guys. I really think it's time for you to start looking for another job because, you know, and she gave me like this whole speech. Like, you're a really good worker. It's so brutally fucking crazy because this is this is like the shit that you would hear like out of a rejection, right? Like you're, you're asking a girl, hey, there's somebody out there that's better for you. That is the, the most mind boggling shit in the world. She basically was like, hey. Did he just get not you, it's me, by his fucking job? You know, can you just stop coming to the store? The Because bo- I guess, like, the boss was bitching again. I don't know what the fuck. Maybe, you know, that the, he turned the camera on because he's always watching it. You know, he's, he's probably, like, jerking off or some weird shit. And then, you know, my subhuman ass walks in and I interrupted his jerk-off session. I don't fucking know. And he got mad and started calling again. And, you know, maybe she got scared she was going to get fired and, you know, ended up just calling me and telling me, like, please just... You know. I'm the one who knocked. <laughs> <laughs> okay so i can tell you honestly what would happen somebody would tell him look you've got to check the quality and he would not <laughs> he would have issues with trusting anybody else to check the quality and would eventually end up quality checking it himself and then come up hopelessly addicted to drugs lose all motivation to actually manufacture the drugs and end up ending and have, having to go to somebody else for his drug addiction and losing all the money that he would have gained you know try not to come here anymore because you know the boss is mad and i really think it's time for you to look for another job that is some shit you would hear out of a fucking rejection man and i was just like no fucking way that's crazy but yeah i don't know it's just like, it's like ingrained in my head now you know it's, it's almost as painful as like a it's just this mission is such a rough mission in this game by the way it took me entirely too long to like i i won like end to end did not die going through this mission but it just took forever i also didn't realize until like well after this mission that i was playing the game on hard the entire time um i don't know i still think i did pretty good i need to keep playing the game i enjoyed it all the shit's painful man it really is whatever it doesn't matter um the only thing worse than this was the fucking the mall or the gym or whatever the fuck it was. I don't know. I, I don't, but I feel like I didn't even really do anything wrong like that last time. I just, I mean, of course, cause like the boss, like, Oh, my jerk off session. Oh, uh, like I'm, I told her, like, I was like, I'm sorry. You know, I, I, I won't do that next time. And I didn't, I really didn't guys. I, I swear to God, like I walked in, said hello, bare minimum, got my shit and left probably 10 minutes, guys, 10 minutes max. And, uh, yeah. Cause I listened, I'm not gonna, you know, I don't want to be like disrespectful and shit and whatever, but it was just weird. You know, like she, yeah, just, she was like, yeah, I think it's time for you to start looking for another job. And uh, meanwhile, little does she know, I already was, and I had been for like the past three months. <laughs> oh man! And yeah, she just like kind of hung up, and I guess I guess that's it. Then she just told me like straight up, just don't come here, and you know, just start looking for another job. You were a good employee. God, it's so crazy, man. Sounds like a typical rejection. You're such a good guy, but there's someone out there for you. You're such a good worker, but there's another <laughs> job out for you. So, so here's the good news. Here's, you guys want to hear the good news? So after she did that, kind of like panicked a little bit. Uh, I ended up calling somebody who I used that used to work at that job, who he ended up like leaving. I think this time around last year. Was he a band kid? And, um, I ended up like giving him a quick call just to like, I don't know. I, was, I just wanted to see how he was doing. And, you know, I found out where he was working. He told me, he's like, I told him like, dude, like this whole, I told him everything. I'm like, bro, this shit sucks balls. And he's like, okay, let me talk, you know, let me talk to, uh, the hiring manager and, you know, maybe I can, you know, get you on board here. And, uh, yeah, just yesterday at 11 o'clock, uh, he gave me a call, but he didn't give me a job. Basically what he said, he's like, Hey, you know, I heard from, you know, the, the guy, he's like, that you're a really good worker. Uh, you know, unfortunately, like we're not looking for anybody at the moment, but we'll definitely keep in touch with you. And, you know, I, I told him, like, all the shit I did, you know, gave it, you know, the resume, all that shit. And so I might have a, I might have a job soon. Uh, so that's that's pretty good, I guess. But other than that, man, that was just, like, so defeating. Like, <laughs> oh, God, it's like a... <laughs> to be the brand, it just ended up... <laughs> had to repeat to him. Broken record. I think it's time for you to look for another job. I think it's time for you to look for another job. I think it's time for you to look for another job. God. <sighs> <laughs> all right. That's pretty much it for now, man. Jeez. 
I'm still convinced that this man is just a All bad right. cup of coffee away from just entirely fucking mass tragedy. That's all, all right, to today I want to talk about. I think I get his problem. His stories never go anywhere. Well, if you hadn't noticed, he doesn't go anywhere either. <laughs> oh man, this man is just the epitome of like failed at life, <laughs> but didn't realize it yet. Oh shit, I gotta see this last one before I call it a night. All right, today I want to make a quick uh little video about just the brutal aftermath. <laughs> the fuck? Is this how he sees himself? Okay, wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. There's stuff to dissect here. Okay, so the orange-haired ogre is a red herring, literally. Um, We've got a basketball, an iPhone, Dunkin' Donuts. Further, further driving home the point that I believe he is from Jersey or the immediate surrounding area um, because everybody else believes in Starbucks. And then he has this, and I want to say this GPS looks like fucking Manhattan. Maybe I'm reading into it. I was saying last time he's Cobra without <laughs> the disabilities. He really is. Oh man. He replaced the five humans with ingest maximum tubes. <laughs> He'd be early King Cobra. He really, yeah, you guys are spot on, man. Of everything from the bar. I mean, Wingman's back now. Uh, we're probably going to hang out tonight, actually. It is. <laughs> no, he is very much disabled. Is this, what, what the fuck day is it? <laughs> December 18th. Oh, God, man. I thought it was like the fucking third. But, um, yeah, it's December 18th. And uh, probably going to see him tonight. I don't know if I'm going to upload this tonight. I don't know what. But either way. Uh, one of the most recent copes I've had, you know, it's just been like a very defeating past two weeks. Um, you don't say every time, every time this guy starts out a video, it's never, I have great news. It's always, well, today was worse. You know, loneliness is catching up again. It's getting to my head. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm glad, you know, I'm ha I might be hanging out with Wingman. That's pretty cool. But I still kind of feel like something's missing and I can't really explain it. <laughs> you know, it could be. I was going with the fact that maybe he's going to the garden to catch game. But either way, what I was going to say was a recent cope I had is, uh, I still have, I'm still going to do it because it's like, it's all right. You know, it keeps your mind off shit. But yeah, I go, I go to the park late at night, subhuman night ghouling, the basketball court. You know, I'm the only one there. Is he always in his car recording these videos? Like, is he so ashamed of, uh, of him in his life that the only place he has confidence to record videos is in a fucking vehicle? After his love with the stripper, he's going to get his age alive, cisgendered, non-related, consenting god girlfriend in his clock tower mansion, and he'll hate it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but he's on his way to the strip club. He has to be efficient. He records these in the parking lot of the strip club, waiting for the band kids. You know, and I just pretty much shoot hoops. Kind of reminded me of my childhood a little bit, which <laughs> it's not really, you know, the best thing, but, you know, it's reminded me of my childhood. But I did bring back a, a bunch of memories. Like, I was just thinking. This man talks like he's fucking end of life. Like, 65, stage 9 cancer. Okay, like, <laughs> it reminds me of my youth. You know, just like on the basketball court, I was just thinking about all this shit. I'm like, you know, I should make like another. He started drinking last week or something. Like, <laughs> I mean, he's already a full blown alcoholic, but. Video about like the, the basketball diaries, you know, from when I was younger, because I sucked absolute dick at basketball, man. <laughs> uh, but either way, um, there's this one night, this was like sort of after the whole, um, you know, bar incident with the girl I used to go to high school with. Uh, I was playing basketball and I was drinking coffee again. It was like late at night. I don't know why. He still is the youth. <laughs> I was just drinking coffee, you know, shooting hoops, and I ended up just you know, sitting in my car, still just like drinking coffee. Even though I'm not really a big fan of coffee, I was just kind of, I don't know. I was just like, you know what? Because I just like, I. This is him. This is this is him. He thinks him his him. He thinks this is what this is his self representation of self before he got into the whole fucking uh, South Park's like schizo. I always have terrible energy. So I was drinking coffee, you know, just sitting in my car just after a lonely night, just, you know, playing basketball. 
<laughs> it reminds me of when I was a kid, six months ago. It was so long ago. And I pulled out my phone. I was just thinking, you know, very true. Might as well text her. You know, why not? Because I'm so bored. I like nobody to talk to right now. And I eventually did. You know, I just whipped out my phone, texted her. I forgot. I gotta like, I gotta pull it out real quick. See exactly what I said. But um, basically, so yeah. I pulled Is he near a railway bridge? Is this where he ends it? I mean, obviously it isn't because we know that we've gotten this exciting script stripper club content that comes up but like does he not sound like he could be potentially close to ending it here on my phone i said something i think i said something about the program i was like asking her a question like just like something to you know start a conversation you know if, asking her if she's still in it because you know i got taken out of it i'm done with that obviously and she said i remember she said hi friend <laughs> she said hi friend when i said that um wait, and so, yeah i was just wait what, what did he say conversation you know if, if asking her if she's still in it because you know i got still in what exactly what i said but um Basically, so yeah, I pulled out my phone. I said something. I think I said something about the program. I was like asking her a question, like just like something to you know start a conversation. You know, if, if asking her if she's still in it because you know I got taken out of it. I'm done with that, obviously. And she said, I remember she said hi, friend. <laughs> she said hi, friend. When I said she's like, nope, immediately put him in his place. <laughs> so now I gotta look at near my railroad. <laughs> that um and yeah i was just that night i was just like texting her a bunch of random shit oh, i'm reading it right now let me see let me see like the stuff i asked her i told her i was drinking coffee she said oh boy i love my donkey who the fuck calls dunkin donuts so i told her i was drinking dunkin donuts coffee who the fuck calls it donkey my donkey my donkey god that's fucking cringe but uh what else did i ask her uh I'm telling you like it, it's only like this area of the country that was ever obsessed with dunkin donuts to this level okay like i know because i'm from there and that's i i I was depressed when I moved out of here and stopped drinking coffee because they only had fucking Starbucks, okay? <laughs> Let's see. I were talking about uh, why shit is so expensive because, like, she has no money, too. Uh, what else did I ask? Did anyone die from high school yet? Uh, what else? What? Bro. No, he didn't. He did not. He did not. He's not striking up a conversation with a girl and goes, did anybody die from school yet? No, I misheard that shit. No, no fucking way. Ask her, uh, let's see. Oh, we're talking about uh, why shit is so expensive because, like, she has no money, too. Uh, what else did I ask? Did anyone die from high school yet? Uh, what else? Nope, he definitely um, fucking did that. Nope. Sure as fuck. Bored as fuck. Oh, we're talking about drugs. <laughs> it's just, like, fucking stupid. Oh, you want to crazy, too? Hold on. I got to keep scrolling down and see, like, where, where this uh, message is. Let's see. Uh,. Dude, I don't know why the fuck. She, like, just reading the shit that I say, I don't know how the fuck you can't laugh. Like, she, she had to have been sitting there laughing her fucking ass off. Like, who the fuck? All right. Uh, I think it started, like, we're talking about... I gotta find where the text message is. We're talking about... Um, he must have remembered his antidepressants this day. You know, when we were younger, I asked her if she was a bastard child. Like, if she was a shit kid. And she was, like, telling me a bunch of stories when she was younger, getting in trouble. And, uh... Oh, here it is. So, if you didn't know, guys, there's a video on my channel. He has silly age 40 years. He's expecting people to die. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you know, Hoboken is, is a very, very, very likely location for this man. Very likely. Channel, um, it's like, I think it's a pretty old one. I think it's called like the first uh, like rejection I ever had. It was in elementary school. Long story short, basically. The railways next to a beer store. In Hoboken, this motherfucker's recording before loading up on Twisted Tees. <laughs> how, how sad would it be, like, just from the way that this man has spoken and, like, the things that we picked up from his video, if we actually figured out the, the fucking location, the city that he lives in. <laughs> Based on his fucking life habits. And it's not even like really social engineering like <laughs> there's in first grade there's like me and this other irish kid with like he had like literally like white hair but um we both had a <laughs> with this guy and the way he describes people now we've got an irish kid with white hair before we had the stripper with bangs like i i'm <laughs> wait is the ogre the irish kid or is that him now now i've got a now i'm kind of intrigued i had a crush on this one like little blonde girl and uh the whole the whole grade knew all that you know we were just it was just like this whole thing and uh she obviously like she liked him more and i remember one day we were sitting outside the recess uh you know because we had to like wait in these little lines and he basically you know because he was like holding her 
and I was like standing behind him and like he kissed her on the head and like he looked at me with like this grin like this look and he said something man it was like you'll never have this or it was like some shit like he said something Jesus Christ wait was he hoping this kid specifically died like did he put something in his Dunkin Donuts and like he's like did he die yet <laughs> I, I need to work at my alibi do I need to stay at my alibi location for a bit longer <laughs> holy shit Okay, so the Reddit says he's a ginger, so okay. So the ogre is him. Jesus fucking Christ. If I can do this half to ass, imagine somebody's actually trying. And it just literally, like, the first thing that came out of my mouth, like, it just slipped out of my mouth just because, like, how much pissed me off. I just said, I'm going to kill you. Like, that was, like, the first thing that came out of my mouth. And, like, immediately. <laughs> I told you. I fucking called it. I fucking called it. This man has homicidal tendencies, and I called it. I knew it. I fucking called it back when it, we, he was joking around, going to strip clubs with fucking people, b talking to the band kids. Like, he's got homicidal tendencies. This man is going to fucking commit mass murder. Immediately, I regretted it. Like, it just, you know, it just slipped out of my mouth. And that's yeah. when everyone, you know, flipped out. The teachers were like, oh, my God. Whoa. You know, and they had to have, like, this whole investigation. I'm like, motherfucker, like, that just that just pissed me off when I said that. I didn't mean it. Like, obviously. You know what I mean? Like, this dude literally just, like, kissed my crush in front of me and just said some shit to me. And I'll never forget that, too, dude. The fucking the smirk he had on his face, you know, when he was saying that to me. But um, after, you know, after I said that, I'll read it out. This is what she said. Uh, she said, dude, there's literally billions of people crowding this earth. There's someone out there for you. Oh, wait, there's someone out there for everyone. I promise you. But fuck that kid. I hope his marriage ends in divorce one day for that. I don't know. Probably not. At the end of the day, I still lost, you know, <laughs> but, um, you know, a funny thing too, <laughs> I want to talk about, <laughs> you know, cause I was thinking about her boyfriend and, you know, the brutal <laughs> comments of like, you know, here you are laughing about this guy's hairline. Meanwhile, he's, you know, going home with your high school crush and, uh, you know, getting her back blown out by him. Meanwhile, you, here you are defeated. I mean, <laughs> that is so fucking funny. Like that's so brutally true, man. Like it is really funny, but, um, you know, another thing too, like I got to talk about this, man. Like this is probably like the worst comment aside from like the just bro advice, the whole you're judgmental, bro. Oh my God. You're a bad person. Cause you're judgmental. It's like, you know, first off, like, I can't sit here and be a hypocrite about it and be like, you know, start crying like, oh, I can't believe he called me ugly and then like roast somebody. You know what I mean? Like at this point in my life, um, you know, I've been verbally abused pretty much my whole life. And like, I can't nowadays. It just, it just goes in one ear and out the other. Like, I just don't even care anymore. Like, I just, I'm such a hardcore jester now. I feel like, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, Kevin, not Kevin Gates, Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart, where like he said like, oh, I make fun of my height so nobody else can. It's like, like I said, I just, I can't be a hypocrite and cry and complain about it. And that's like the whole funny part. It's like, I don't even really complain about shit. Like, if someone were to punch you in the head, and you go home to your parents and say, oh, so-and-so punched me in the head, and they tell you, oh, quit complaining, bro, it's like, that's what happened. I don't understand. Like, I'm just trying to entertain, you know what I mean? I'm trying to just explain things that happen, and, like, I don't really have any emotion behind it. Like, yeah, these things happen to me. Like, sure, it's like... He's a sociopath. <laughs> I, I don't want to, like... You know, I, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like I'm not complaining about it. I'm just simply... DVDR, you are a sociopath, and you will commit mass murder, and I'm here for it all the way up to that point, and then I may have to be a character witness simply telling a story of like what happened so i mean it is what it is um i mean obviously you know being the only red-haired kid in fucking school pretty much you know growing up with acne all that shit was... i would totally be the person to be at a dvdr trial as a character witness and be like no this man has a strong will to live all he's ever had and talked about is how much joy his life brings him um he he said that if there's anything in this world he would want it would be to live forever just to be at the Oh, I would, mm, I would love to be that guy just for him. Horrific. And it's like, I don't really, you know, I don't even care anymore. Like I'm at that, that like numbing point. Like I don't really care too much. Um, I mean, it is what it is. Like you will have those moments. I mean, especially when you get like 10 drunk girls laughing in your face. <laughs> My job. Face about how you look like you're five years old when you're 23. That one's pretty brutal. Yes, that did happen. Well, what happened? The, the band kids stand you up again now, man? Numbing point. Like I don't really care too much. Um, <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Like, you will have those moments. I mean, especially when you got like 10 drunk girls laughing in your face oh, about how dude. you look like you're five years old. When... <laughs> we know where you live, DBDR. We know. We will dox you. <laughs> okay. And you're 23. That one's pretty brutal. Yes, that did happen. <sighs> <laughs> See, you just can't, can't help but fucking laugh at it, man. Like, I don't care anymore, man. It's so fucking funny. But, um, yeah, you know, another one, too. Like, it's just, man, like, you're going to tell me if somebody walks into a room and they have a major flaw, you're not going to at least think it. You know what I mean? It's not going to, like, pop in your head, like, whoa, you know, depending on what it is. I mean, obviously, guys, like, I'm not going to go, like, this for this dude, like, his hairline, I'm not going to, like, go up to him and start, like, roasting him for his hairline. Like, I'm not stupid. You know what I mean? I mean, that's, that's like, the easiest way to catch an uppercut, unless your chin's recessed. I don't know. But, uh, I don't know, man. Like, people, like, jump to conclusions and all that shit all the time. What the fuck? Did I hear that right? 
Like, you're going to tell me if somebody walks into a room and they have a major... F- uh, hold on. i got to slow this down to full. <laughs> well, you're not going to at least think it. You know what I mean? It's not going to, like, pop in your head like, whoa, you know, depending on what it is. I mean, obviously, guys, like, I'm not going to go... Like, this for this dude, like, his hairline, I'm not going to, like, go up to him and start, like, roasting him for his hairline. Like, I'm not stupid. You know what I mean? I mean, that's that's, like, the easiest way to catch an uppercut. Unless your chin's recessed, I don't know. But, uh... <laughs> okay, first off, I thought he said unless you were ginger sis. And I was like, wait. And no, he actually says unless your chin is recessed. Jesus fucking Christ, man. I would totally testify for him. Your Honor, it's impossible. The only one that he wants to unalive is himself. <laughs> The entire court is just a massive sub five humans. <laughs> uh, request dismiss charges. <laughs> oh my god, that's so true. Uh, I don't know, man. Like people like jump to conclusions and all that shit all the time. It's just like I'm just trying to explain everything that happens in my day to day life. If it sounds like I'm complaining, then I guess I'm complaining. I don't know. But if someone calls me ugly and, like, I come on here and talk about it, I mean, that's just kind of what happened. I don't know. I wouldn't really consider that complaining. I don't know. Maybe I'm delusional. You got to understand this brutal fact about human nature, too. This kind of goes hand in hand with the whole, uh, you know, judgmental thing. I remember I was thinking about this, how, like, this was, like, back in 2020, you know, my friends, like, I remember this, there's one of them, like, it was at, at, like, a party. Long story short, the dude was like, he was like, bro, she was a 2 out of 10, bro, and, like, she wouldn't get with me. That doesn't make sense, bro. And, like, this is the logic that, that these guys have in their heads because they don't get it. They think, like, oh, bro, like, because she's not that attractive. That means that, like, she's entitled to be with me because she's not attractive. Like, that's, like, the thinking that they have in their heads. But you got to understand that, um, you know, people don't have to learn certain behaviors, right? Um, you don't have to learn what an attractive person looks like. It's just literally just pre-programmed in your brain, like, when you're born. Uh, it's the same with, like, other species and different things. Like, there's, there's certain behaviors when they're just pre-programmed in, in their brain. And it's, like, you know, I can't get mad at it. Like, I used to, like, kind of be like that. I used, I used to, like, scratch my head and wonder, like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. But it definitely does. I don't get mad at it at all. Um, if you're not attracted to me, then you're not attracted to me. I mean, there's nothing, like, there's nothing, just nothing I can do about it. Uh, I've kind of, like, learned to accept that. And, I mean, it's hard, right? Because, like, you obviously want to be loved and desired and all that. Um, but... <laughs> Stream elements is banned. <laughs> you know what? I might actually see some growth because Teddy isn't here banning my stream, stream elements, damn it. <laughs> you, can, you just understand it. Like, let's say, for example, there was no mirrors at all. Like, nobody knew what they looked like. I didn't know what I looked like. None of you guys know what you look like. And somebody puts... I don't know, 10 pictures of attractive people and you have to pick side note. And I'm going to cut this out when I go to do the VODs. Uh, so here, so I know where to do it. Um, nope, not what I was wanting. Now I'll just look for me frantically looking for the right screen. Hey, there it is. Um, okay. So I'm probably going to leave this VOD or like this whole stream up for a little bit because, uh, Hey, it's going to take me a bit to be able to sit here and like cut stuff up. Um, probably will try to do it Sunday, but B, I'm going to leave out the section with Husker because I don't know if he's going to try and strike my stream and I'd rather him strike the stream than the video, but, uh, there's a strong possibility. And I was kind of getting those feelings when, when the other person was in here earlier saying that they knew Husker and that yeah i was like oh yeah i could see it the ones that you think are attractive if he does then it's over i mean <laughs> there's uh <laughs> well thanks dbdr we love you too um <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah because i'm not gonna be quiet if i get struck i'm going to i'll fight it because i think i've done more than enough fair commentary and uh you know, be a shame if things ended up where they shouldn't end up. Um, I'll let people decide what those things are and what's ending up where. But, but yeah, I uh, he's not afraid to strike other people, so I'm uh, I'm not gonna be shocked if he attempts to strike me. And I think I was more than generous towards the guy. Can you just understand it? Like, let's say, for example, there was no mirrors at all. Like, nobody knew what they looked like. I didn't know what I looked like. None of you guys know what you look like. And somebody puts, I don't know, 10 pictures of attractive people, and you have to pick the ones that you think are attractive. There's, for the first five are, like, unattractive, and then the next five are really attractive. You don't have to teach them, like, you know, which one is more aesthetically pleasing. That's why it's so funny when people, like, cry about beauty standards. They're brainwashing the beauty standards. Why do the pretty girls get so much love? It's like, because 
they know people know what good looking people look like i don't know <laughs> like it's just like you know so i can't sit here and like cry about like you know some girl who's like not that attractive rejecting me like i don't get mad at it i understand it it's like if you don't find me attractive <laughs> you don't find me attractive i mean it is what it is it's like but but like some of these guys like they genuinely don't get it like they just don't get it i mean they'll think in their heads like that you know they're entitled to somebody yeah he definitely he definitely strikes me as that as well um I, I, that's where i've got the feeling that just uh I don't know. I'm not going to be surprised if I wake up to a strike on my fucking channel. Um, I would love to see him claim my entire stream because we're going on six and a half hours right now. So we'll see because it'll be really easily dismissed. Um, just because considering only a third of the stream was even remotely about him and it wasn't even a third of the stream because we took forever covering fucking review tech and we've only been on this for about an hour and a half just because somebody's on the same looks level as you doesn't really mean anything you know what i mean like i'm sure that you would leave like let's say you're both a three out of ten <laughs> i'm sure like once someone who looks like brad pitt walks along and let's say the other one looks like mila jovich or whatever whatever female model you would instantly be like oh shit you know i mean i've heard it first i've heard some brutal shit guys from <laughs> from wingman oh my god he's sort of in like a little bit of a oofy doofy predicament and uh Oh man, it's because he keeps talking about like, oh bro, trust me, like, you see, still talking about like, one, he has like a, a super one itis guy, like a super, super one itis, and he's like, bro, instantly, like, he, he barely even really talked to her, too. And, uh, I remember he. What is he talking about here? Who the, I need to go back and find the lore on this whole one itis person. Wait, he chaptered this one as well. Did he, like, why is there so many little chapters? Oh, look. Nice to know that story's going somewhere. Hold it, like, drag. Oh, nope, nope, I didn't want to click that. Uh, <laughs> I wonder what, what, we, what are we qualifying as older? Okay. Another one, too. Like, it's just, man, like, you're going to tell me if somebody walks into a room and they have a major flaw, you're not going to at least think it. You know what I mean? It's not going to, like, pop in your head, like, whoa, you know, depending on what it is. I mean, obviously, guys, like, I'm not going to go, like, this, for this dude, like, his hairline, <laughs> I'm not going to, like, go up. <laughs> YouTube sometimes generates chapters. Okay. All right. They don't auto-generate chapters this in this weird <laughs> let's just say that to him and start like roasting him for his hairline like i'm not stupid you know what i mean i mean that's that's like the easiest way to catch an uppercut unless your chin's recessed i don't know but uh i don't know man like people i don't think this person is going to be smart enough to let it go i think they are going to probably spray sand it and i don't know they seem to be very very simply swayed let's just say that and I think if there's any, oh, what's the word I want to go with? If there's any genuineness to the fact that I cost them somebody on their side, they're not going to like me. People like jump to conclusions and all that shit all the time. It's just like, I'm just trying to explain everything that happens in my day-to-day -day life. If it sounds like I'm complaining, then I guess I'm complaining. I don't know. But if someone calls me ugly and like I come on here and talk about it, I mean, that's just kind of what happened. I don't know. I wouldn't really consider that complaining. I don't know. Maybe I'm delusional. You got to understand this brutal fact about human nature, too. This kind of goes hand in hand with the whole, uh, you know, judgmental thing. I remember I was thinking about this, how like this was like back in 2020, you know, my friends like I remember there's there one of them like it was at, at like a party. Long story short, the dude was like, he was like, bro, she was a two out of 10, bro. And like she wouldn't get with me. That doesn't make sense, bro. And like, this is the logic that, that these guys have in their heads because they don't get it. They think like, oh, bro, like because she's not that attractive. That means that like she's entitled to be with me because she's not attractive like that's like the thinking that they have in their heads but you gotta understand that um you know people don't have to learn certain behaviors right um you don't have to learn what an attractive person looks like it's just literally just pre-programmed in your brain like when you're born uh it's the same with like other species and different things like there's there's certain behaviors when they're just pre-programmed in, in their brain and it's like you know i can't get mad at it like i used to like kind of be like that i used, I used to like scratch. i'm glad you think that was the worst part of the stream and it wasn't rich doing what rich did scratch my head and wonder like oh that doesn't make any sense but it definitely does. I don't get mad at it at all. Um, if you're not attracted to me, then you're not attracted to me. I mean, there's nothing like there's no, just nothing I can do about it. Uh, I've kind of like learned to accept that. And I mean, it's hard, right? Because like you obviously want to be loved and desired and all that. Um, but you, you just understand it. Like, let's say, for example, there was no mirrors at all. Like nobody knew what they looked like. I didn't know what I looked like. None of you guys know what you look like. And somebody puts, I don't know, 10 pictures of attractive people. And you have to pick the ones that you think are attractive. There's for the first five are like unattractive. And then the next five are really attractive. You don't have to teach them, like, you know, which one is more aesthetically pleasing. That's why it's so funny. What the fuck is this logic? What does it matter what you look like if you're picking out people on a fucking table? When people, like, cry about beauty standards, they're brainwashing the beauty standards. Why do the pretty girls get so much love? It's like, because they know people know what good-looking people look like. I don't know. <laughs> like, it's just like, you know, so I can't sit here and, like, cry about, like, 
you know, some girl who's like not that attractive rejecting me. Like, I don't get mad at it. <laughs> I understand it. It's like, if you don't find me attractive. <laughs> that is IRL obligation. I mean, I'm just trying to provide content at this point. You know what I mean? <laughs> attractive. You don't find me attractive. I mean, it is what it is. It's like, but, but like some of these guys, like I genuinely don't get it. Like they just don't get it. I mean, they'll think in their heads like that, you know, they're entitled to somebody. Um, just because they're just because somebody's on the same looks level as you doesn't really mean anything. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure that you would leave. Like, let's say you're both a three out of 10. <laughs> I'm sure like once someone who looks like Brad Pitt walks along and let's say the other one looks like Mila Jovich or whatever, whatever female model, you would instantly be like, oh, shit. Has this man ever had anything 10 out of 10 in his life? You know what? Has this man had anything above an eight out of 10 in his life? Like, I don't think he has. Like, even the strippers he was critiquing to be below eights. Like, <laughs> shit, you know, I mean, I've heard it first. I've heard some brutal shit, guys, from <laughs> from wingmen. Oh, my God. He's sort of in like a little bit of a oofy doofy predicament. And, uh, oh man, it's because he keeps talking about like, oh bro, trust me, like, you see, he's still talking about like, one, he has like a, a super one-itis guy, he's like a super, super one-itis. And he's like, bro, instantly, like, he, he barely even really talked to her too. And, uh, I remember he, oh man, there's so much brutal shit that like, <laughs> that I've like witnessed and seen. He basically drove her, uh, to the beach like hours, like basically free ride, and she left them immediately. Like, she left us immediately to like go join up with her friends. He, she basically. Oh, <laughs> Which is like Arkansas fucking nineteens, okay? Got a free ride out of him, but um, because like <laughs> they had planned to like spend the day together or something. Oh god! And then he asked her. He, he's a king of like asking girls out more than once. But um, either way, he's like, dude, I leave my current girlfriend for you know her any day of the week, and it's like all because she's super good looking. Like there's there's seriously nothing else. I mean, just because she's good looking. Um, that is fucking brutal, man. I'm sure that, like that has to listen, guys. That has to be on like those oofy doofy type couples' minds, man. Like both male and female, they have to both be thinking like, oh, if that. What the fuck is this oofy doofy fucking shit? I came along. I'd leave him in a heartbeat. Um, I don't know. Like I feel like the only reason he's staying is because of you know he has no other options at the moment. Um, and yeah, I don't know. That one's <laughs> that one's pretty brutal. But um, yeah. Let me just go back to the whole the whole fucking thing again. Yeah. So. Uh, she said that about the whole friend thing. Uh, let me see what else she said. Yeah, there's literally billions of people crowding this earth. There's someone out there for everyone, I promise you. Okay. I'm not actually mad about it because, like, I wouldn't even, like, want to date her at all. You know what I mean? Because it's, like, it just seems too much. And I'm not coping. Like, I swear to God, I probably wouldn't. Like, I'm over it now. Um, you know, like, I think, like, two weeks ago was probably, like, one of my better weeks. Like, this was sort of around, like, this time where I was texting her. And I was just, you know, gym every day, eating good. I felt, like, relatively content. Like, obviously, still, like, just kind of low. But I felt okay, you know, just following this routine. Like, I got to get back into it. But, um, I mean, like, what, a few days ago, I fucked up bad. I got super drunk. I'm trying to figure out if he's driving right now while doing all of this or not. I think he is. I think I, like, I hear, like, what sounds like basically a vehicle from, like, interior noises. Like, an engine running, acceleration, deceleration type noises. And I thought, you know, <laughs> I, I basically, I, I don't remember shit, guys. Like, I'm, I'm going to be straight up honest. I drank so much to the point of, like... I don't know what the fuck. I can't even tell you, man. Like, hallucination, uh, and I didn't sleep for, like, four days in a row. I don't remember shit. I didn't eat anything. And I just kind of, like, got thrown off track, and it's, like, I got That's, like, a fucking problem. Like, I got to not do that again. So, I don't know. Next time, wingman, uh, you know, whenever I think we're hanging out tonight. So, if we hang out tonight, I got to not drink. Or if I do, just drink a little instead of a whole fucking fifth of... And he lowered the nose. <laughs> he left the beer depot. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine him walking around with his phone just recording all this shit? Whatever the fuck it could be anything at this point. But um Yeah, like a few days ago I basically I went to the bar, I drank a lot, and I walked to the bar. Oh god, I'm so lucky, man. Like I really am. I just talked to a bunch of boomers. I remember there's like a bunch of boomers there. <laughs> it was like a uh, what day was this? I gotta find out what day this was. I don't know, but um because I don't remember I don't remember shit. I really don't. Uh, I I remember like literal bits and pieces of it. I just remember talking to a couple boomers, I remember spilling my drink and getting kicked out. I remember like falling, trying to walk home and like people, like I kept dropping my phone and wallet. I'm so lucky I didn't get like fucking arrested or like, uh, you know, people like robbed me and shit. Like I am lucky for that. But I was thinking in my head like, oh, maybe if I drink and go to the bar, like. Oh, <laughs> he's crossing the river to get. <laughs> I can meet people and blah, blah, blah. I, I also remember like I ended up calling a bunch of people. <laughs> like what the fuck? I called like a bunch of people, just reconnected with a bunch of uh, like old friends and stuff. You hear it. You hear like it accelerating right now, right? I'm gonna be honest, I don't really remember shit with that either. So, yeah, uh, this week definitely I'll have to fucking, uh, cause I mean, I was okay, you know, until then, until going on that like little bit of a bender. So, uh, it shouldn't be too hard. I mean, it is what it is. Um, what else? What else is going on? Um, aside from that, I'm gonna see another psychiatrist, which I'm gonna be honest, I don't really wanna see. 
I don't really want to see another psychiatrist. <laughs> I just want to like, I don't even know, dude. Cause it's like, I feel like uh, I get so. Why do we think he doesn't want to see the psychiatrist? Is it because the psychiatrist is more successful than him? Or is it because he's better off without the psychiatrist telling him how awful his life is? discouraged like every single day like when i have a routine it's not really hard to follow it just like gets to you and you just get so fucking bored i don't know if you can like relate to this shit but like obviously no one really likes going to the gym you know i mean i've been like that for years most people don't really like to admit that i mean yeah it, it sucks um but you have to do what you have to do um you know eating clean that's that's like sort of relatively easy but it just gets so boring man i can't i don't know but i'm gonna ask myself you know did i really have fun getting blackout hammered drinking two-fifths of whatever the fuck i think i, I don't even know man <laughs> but, uh, you know, going to the bar and making an ass out of myself. Did I have fun doing that? Even this the second time. Not really. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> it's just like, I, again, like, I just, I don't know. Like, I either drink and uh, do something oh stupid, God. make an ass out of myself, or I don't drink and I kind of just sit back and don't really do anything. Uh, you know, it's odd because you even notice nowadays, I mean, if you want to meet people, like, wherever it is, it seems like most people are kind of preoccupied and just, like, working on something, like a goal to do. Like, if you ever, like, try to approach somebody in a public setting uh, that's not they have life goals jesus christ <laughs> and i guess bar related or whatever they just tell you like oh i'm busy i gotta go i gotta do this leave me alone so it is hard to meet people definitely but with wingman i don't know what the fuck the night holds i seriously don't uh the girl from high school i don't think we're gonna invite her i don't even want her to come i really don't want her to come but uh see that was a car passing him like i could tell the difference that was a car like passing him whatever direction but because that was a completely different sound. I swear this man is driving, t is talking about all this shit. So, what day is today again? It's a Monday. Ugh. There's going to be nobody <laughs> at the bar. I bet there's going to be a bunch of fucking boomers there. But uh, <laughs> honestly, I don't mind it. I remember I was talking to um, Jesus Christ. very faintly, like remembering. I like. It's a Monday. Okay, like I had a year like this in my life and it was literally like... 21 to like 22 maybe maybe i don't even think i lasted a full fucking year jesus christ i pulled up i remember like i had my chair i like uh, pulled it like dragged it by one hand almost like knocked a bunch of shit over and i, I put it down and I, and I was talking to these two women like these two old like they were like well, not old but they were they were um you know these two women that were in there Maybe 50s. They had a son and a daughter that were both my age. So, yeah. And I just remember talking to them. I don't remember what I said. I can't remember. I just remember asking them about their son and daughter. Um, I got to stop. I got to stop doing that. I have to stop. It is so low inhibitionly bad. But it's funny. It's funny, but it's not. You know, it's sad. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. But yeah, that's all I remember. All I remember is like uh, spilling my drink and throwing out, uh, talking to like these older women that were there. Uh, I remember because I, my vision was like so blurry. Like, I, did I have my glasses on? I think I lost my glasses for a while. Like, or I left them at my house or something. But because I have terrible vision as it is, but I remember like very like blurrily, like very blurry. Like she had uh, like long brown hair, skinny. She had glasses on, and I just can't really remember her face that well. Um, like that one, the one, the main woman I was talking to. The other one was just kind of like you know listening in. And yeah, walking home, I'm lucky that I didn't. Get <laughs> the the teacher who who was a band kid <laughs> in post Vietnam. <laughs> fucking robbed oh. and uh yeah wingman should have been there for that one man i wish i was thinking in my head that's why i did i was like you know what if you know i don't need him to go to the bar i don't need him to have a fun time and i end up drinking and it, yeah that's what happened i talked to these these fucking moms these boomers and just i don't remember shit <laughs> so yeah this week uh definitely um obviously like i can't drink i can't handle it like like physically and like mentally so um that's done i gotta stop that you know i mean obviously tonight it might be different because like i'm with wingman but i don't know i'll think about it but I'm like the rest of my family guys. Like I knew this from the start. That's why like I kind of like beat myself up over it. That's why like I'm like, damn, why did I actually do that? You know, that's my fault. That's my mistake. Shouldn't have done it. But yeah, I'm like the rest of my family where they can they cannot have one drink. They cannot have two drinks. They cannot have three. They have to have like fucking twenty. They have to drink everything until they pass out. That's basically how I am. I don't know why. I, I don't. I wish I could tell you why. I don't know. My dad's the same way. Uh, on both sides, they just drink till they pass out, and that's that. So that's called hereditary alcoholism. But... Yeah, that's pretty bad. So, um. Yeah, that's it for now. Made some mistakes this week. Had a good week, really good week, you know, with just uh, chilling out, going to the gym. You know, I had like a whole list of stuff. I'm going to make another one this week of just, uh, you know, a routine to follow, things to do. Um, but yeah, I had a good week, then I guess bad week, and now I'm going to try to have a good week this week. So 
I'll let you guys know what happens uh, in the next one. Okay. All right. Um. Leslie. All right. Today. Stop. I wanna... Stop. I said stop. Enough. Enough out of you. Um. Hmm. Holy crap. It's like quarter to fucking four in the morning. Jesus Christ. Um. Yeah. Uh. So. To give you guys, whoever the hell is left, a summary of stuff. I know I kind of said it in the middle of the stream, but I'm going to kind of end stuff off here too. Um, so I don't know how the next week is going to play out. Um, honestly, I know I've got to, at some point, go get medical testing done and shit. So I might need surgery. I don't know how that's going to kind of affect things as far as like streaming and stuff. Um, but uh it's going on. anyway um but yeah i don't i don't know if it's going to affect streaming or not i i'm still working on a couple of things um i'm pretty confident at this point that i believe the the furry Hitler dude is not going to do an interview. I, I don't know. I just haven't heard back from him. I'm just going to assume that he's not going to do an interview. Um, if I hear back, obviously that'll change. Uh, but odds are low. Uh, I'm not exactly a large enough channel to give a good draw. Uh, but um, other than that, I'm still working on a couple other things. Uh, that was there's what I want. Uh, What is going on? XPXQ, who are you? What is going on? What can you tell me about you? I'm kind of interested to see you. I see you in chat. Probably going to get rid of your one message once I decide to get over there, but um, I just, what's, what's going on, buddy? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, um, I mean, if you want to DM me everything, you are more than welcome to. Uh, my name uh, on Discord is the same. If you want to contact me on Discord, you are more than welcome to contact me on there. If you want to contact me directly on X, uh, it's at Strictly Wrong. Those are probably the best ways to get a hold of me. And then I believe I got an email in my um, channel info if you really want to get a hold of me a different way. Uh, do I? Do I? Uh, no, but it's just my at at gmail.com. Um, without the hyphen. It, it's uh, my at without the hyphen at gmail.com. So you can send me whatever you want. I am probably going to uh, pull out that um, that doc. Say I apologize, but I cannot have that happening in my chat. Um, that, um, that doc. Say I apologize, but, but I stop. Shut up. I don't want to talk to myself. Uh, the first name stuff is whatever, but, uh, I apologize. I, I don't apologize for that. I, I can't have that stuff in the chat. Um, but other than that, uh, 
everyone chose to believe. <laughs> Not one bad day away from <laughs> casting the <DVR. laughs> Uh But yeah, I mean, if you uh, if you genuinely want to send me everything, you are more than welcome to. Uh, I just, I, I, I'm not one for condoning like the whole docs and stuff. I, I realize that information's out there, um, and that, uh, you know, it, it can be readily found. Um, but you know, they, they didn't give their permission. It's not something I know. Uh, <laughs> so he's not truly living the incel life. Okay. Yeah, look it. I'm I'm willing to I'm willing to see what you got on, uh, showing us about you know, him not being a true cell, him not being an incel, maybe not being a black pill. Any in information you got? <laughs> um, and he even admit. Okay, all right. Hey, look. As long as you can keep it cool and you don't don't dox him in here. I will talk to you. I will treat you with a respect. I will treat them with a respect. Um, but yeah. Uh, I honestly didn't think that was a real DVR. <laughs> DVDR. Uh, so I'm a little, I'm a little confused. I'm not going to lie there. Um, but yeah, anything you got, uh, send it my way. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll check into it, but I'm probably going to be wrapping up here. Uh, I've been going for like seven hours again. Um, this is why I only do streams once a week. It's it's enough content. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, sorry. I'm I'm not really uh. <laughs> it's called gay fame. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like exhausted at this point and hurt. Uh, it's real to me, damn it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, uh, XP, anything you got, feel free to send it over. I'll take a look at it. I'll look into it. Um, it's about some my ability. Uh, I, I'm all on check it out. Uh, why the fuck not? I ain't got nothing better to do. Uh, aside from work and when I got things that are better to do. Um, but yeah, other than that, so yeah, I, I might have to have surgery. I'm not sure how that's going to affect some upcoming streams and shit, but I, I will keep things posted with the community tab and all the other fun shit, Twitter and everything. Um, I did build a link tree today. I'm going to start throwing that in the video descriptions. That way, kind of declutter shit. I'm also going to throw the link tree in so that when Streamlabs does its thing, it only gives out the link tree. So it'll cut down on the messages with that shit because whatever. Um, but yeah, I do got some content lined up if I am able to go through and do my stream next week. Um, looking at a couple things, you know, uh, Jim told me about Rakeda having a, a further meltdown um, and missing court, which is not a good thing when you're a lawyer. Uh, Going to be looking at that. Uh, I have gone through the stream portion of it, but I kind of want to see if there's any additional stuff because, you know, when I initially found it, um, I found out that like with the, with the Kiwi John stuff, when I initially found that, I was like, oh man, this is good. And I wanted to go find a stream and I found out more stuff. So I, I feel like some stuff gets left on the cutting room floor when it comes to Rakeda. So I definitely want to check into that. Uh, no, I appreciate it. XP. Thank you. Um, Sounds good. You have a good evening. And uh, yeah, uh, like I said, I got a couple other things I'm still looking into. Uh, I, I downloaded a couple videos. There's apparently the whole thing with Alex Keister. Keister I, I can never remember to pronounce his name right when I'm on stream. It's weird. Um, Kister. Alex Kister. Jesus Christ. There's uh, some more stuff with Alex Kister that I want to look into. Um, saturated content. I've been looking into them for some stuff. They've got some pretty good regular content on uh, some like little cow stuff. Um, yeah, 
we we i really want to look at the francis e deck stuff too um let's see okay i'll look into it is your channel your your name on here is it the same at, at and everything Oh, the ex apologizing deleted everything. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, I know with Alex Hitzer, there's some stuff going on. I've got your channel pulled up, XP. I'll take a look at some of that stuff. But if there's any more stuff you want to send me, feel free. Um, but yeah, what else do I got going on? There's a couple good things. Yeah, the deck stuff that Jim sent me. And there's a couple of like scammy things I found out with Discord that was kind of interesting. Uh, a follow up on the Linda Binda stuff. Uh, hmm. There might be some Edwin content coming up soon, but I do want to actually do an only use me blade stream because I, I kind of feel like I'm getting enough uh um stuff to look well, enough people looking at my content that I want to show off this young guy that I found that did this very comprehensive like uh documentary, like multi-part documentary on only use me blade. And I, I didn't know anything about only using the blade before watching it and it was so nice and comprehensive to have a lot of stuff in one spot and it actually was interesting because for part two and part three only use me blade actually gave him interviews so there's some maybe lesser known content there and he also found a bunch of stuff which is kind of what drew only use me blade in so uh it's pretty interesting um Go name anyway. <laughs> They're very, very edgy. Yeah, Jim's part of my uh, comedic relief to help me move the jokes along and sometimes the content. Uh, but yeah, uh, anything you got XP, feel free to send it. Other than that, um, yeah, I'll probably be back on Friday unless something changes, in which case I'll let you guys know. Maybe I'll figure something between now and then if that's the case. Uh, but other than that, y'all have a good night. Um, <laughs> Patrick's news team. Oh, well, I guess it's better than S and T. It seems to be making a resurgence. Um, and not under Salvo either. Um, but yeah. What was I saying? Yeah, I'll probably be back on Friday unless something changes. I'll do it sooner. Blah blah. I'm trying to think where I'm at. Um. But yeah, other than that, y'all have a good, I guess now, Saturday, since, you know, fucking Christ, every time I do these lately, five, six hours, um, I'm gonna go to bed and probably cry myself to sleep because it hurts. Uh, <laughs> I will uh, catch y'all in the next live stream. Y'all have a fantastic week, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, if you enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe, whatever. Um... You guys have a great evening. Thank you so much again. <laughs> have a good night.